uses a variety of derivatives regularly to manage interest rate and commodity prices. Fed Series chief executive has recently been reviewing how the Treasury Department use derivatives in particular options to hedge risk. She has raised queries about aspects of option pricing which she does not understand. In particular, she wants to know the impact upon price of time until expiry of the option and the interest rate. Oh, these are the two Greeks that have been asked in this question. Option expiry of option mean the until expiry, the time until expiry, and the interest rate. These are the two Greeks. Today, date is first August, and Fitz Harris plans to borrow an amount of 48 million on 1st December to finance a major construction project for a period of three years. His Treasury Department has decided to hide the risk associated with this borrowing as there is some uncertainty about how the interest rate will move over the rest of this year. The current base rate, this is always when the examiner is saying to you the current rate, so this is always the support rate, but predictions in media suggest that it could rise or fall by 0.4% by 1 December. Mean when you have to do the transaction, as today is the 1st August, and you have to perform the transaction on 1st December. So there may be increase or decrease. Fed's Harris can borrow fund at floating rate of central bank less 50 basis point. So the, this uh, company, the Fed's Harris company can borrow currently at floating rate plus 50 basis point. Now, first Harris Treasury Department is considering hedging the interest rate risk by using interest rate swap and a caller. First Harris Bank has found a possible counterparty for a swap with first Harris Company. The counterparty can borrow at an annual floating rate of uh, like over plus 130 basis point or at a fixed rate of 4.8 percent. Fed's Harris Bank has quoted a nominal fee or nominal fixed rate of 4.6 percent for it to borrow. The bank would charge a fee of 5 basis point to each party individually to act as an intermediary for the swap. Both parties would share equally the potential gains out of the swap. Examiner has given you the options data. The two exercise prices have been given to you. Examiner has given you the three months future price as well. And that is 95.85. And this is the current three months. I mean, this is the opening future price. Future options contracts are assumed to be settled. At the end of each month, basis is assumed to diminish to zero at a constant rate based on monthly time intervals. It also be assumed that there is no basis risk and there are no margin requirements. Examiner is asking you, calculate in percentage term the results of the hedging strategies that are being considered for 48 million loan. If the central bank rate increased to 4.1 or falls to 3.3%, mean when it is being increased or decreased. Your calculations should demonstrate the rates at which payments between counterparties should make. So this is a very, uh, means the 13 marks examiner tested. So it is a full-fledged numeric question. Then in the B part, the theoretical aspects of the question comment on the results which we have obtained in the part A and discuss the advantages and drawbacks of fit size company if interest rate swaps compared to the callers. Very good. And the third part, this is being relating to the Greeks.
students have you shared the question in the group students Okay, guys, everyone, please open the question. I have sent the question. Okay. Margi, can you hear me, Margi? Yes. Okay. I'm sharing the question in other groups as well. Just give me one minute. Margi, uh, you're silent. What happened? Any issues? No, sir. Madiha, are you there? Yes. Feel sleepy? I guess so. Okay, guys, we are doing the question named as the Fitz Harris. Roman, are you in the class, brother? Okay. <clears throat> now, see, guys, what is going to happen? First of all, try to understand the basic concepts. In this question, one, we have to apply the swap and the other derivative which we have to choose, that is the caller. This to solve according to the data is easy, whatever the data examiner has given to you. But to solve the caller part of the question, what is happening? For the caller, as this is a question of the borrower, if you have to make a borrower caller, remember guys, borrower will always buy put option. Or always buy gap and borrower sell call option or floor. Now, nothing in issue in both of these, these prices have been given to us. These prices have been given in the question. How the examiner confuse you people? For this caller, this put option or the call options are being compared with the closing future price. This closing future price has not been given to you in the question. 
this was the main point in this question. If this price has not given, we cannot solve the color part of this question. So, first of all, we have to find out this closing future prices. So that we can solve this part, the color part. Now, how we will solve the closing future price? B. We are solving the fit sales company. Anyone in the class who can tell me that what is the formula for closing future price? Anyone in the class who can tell me what is the formula for the closing future price? Okay, Is Jacqueline. closing spot. Okay, closing spot. Plus minus remaining basis. Plus minus remaining basis. And remember, guys. Here, you will not follow the opposite direction. Here, you will always follow same direction. Now, in your question, examiner told you what is your current spot, guys. First, we are Finding this closing future price with the increase part. And by how much percentage we have to increase? Tell me. By how much percentage we have to increase? Zero point four. What was your opening spot that has been given to you in the question? The examiner told you that it was 3. Point, how much? 7. Increase it by 0.4%. And now apply the remaining basis formula. Please keep mute your mic. This is opening spot minus opening future. The opening spot is 3.7. What was the future price, guys? What was the future price? Tell me. See, the examiner gave you this future price. Examiner told you 95.85 minus 95.85. So always nominate in the 100, 100 minus 95.85. What is the answer coming? 4.15? 4.15. This is your opening Twitter price. What is the current date today? Everyone, please try to participate. What is the current date today? 1 August. Today is 1st August. And the future of which date we have selected? December. So, type here 30th December. But when we are going to perform the transaction?
Tell me. First December. First December. This is our transaction date. So what is the difference between these two? Zero point four five divided by the total months from August to December. Five months. Five months. So divide by five, multiply by one. So what is this coming? Zero point zero nine percent. 0.09%. So now, what is the trend? The trend is increasing. Add this 0 0.09. What is the closing future price coming? 4.5. This is your closing future price with increase part. Now, let's solve the closing future price with the decrease part. Please keep mute your mic, guys. Decrease by 0.4. Now see what will happen. All the calculation will remain same. Only this figure will change. This is 3.7% minus 0.4% plus 0.09%. What is this figure coming now? Three point. Now clear? Mm, please, I have a question. I don't know if uh, your question is different from mine. Mine yeah. says that the interest rate, if it increases to, increases by 4.1. So you're using four here. Is it just, I don't know if it's my question that is different. See. Okay, okay, okay. Add up both of these figures. 3.7 plus 0 0.4. What is the answer coming? Um, all right. So I get I get that. I'm saying that uh my interest rate here that they are asking me that it should increase to is zero point four. I mean it's four point one and not yeah. four. So you're using four. I don't know if that my question is different from yours. No, no, no. See. Yes. Is this prudence? Yes, this is prudence. So you see prudence? Yes, sir. The, the center, you are talking about this? Yeah, 4.1. So see how this 4.1 is coming. If the central okay. bank base rate increased to 4.1, what is your central bank oh. rate? This is 3.7. Okay. Okay. 3.7 right. plus this is increased. Uh -huh. 0.4%. So this is giving you the 4.1. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this we have already done. Increase part. Yes. And this is the degree part. Yeah. Okay? Okay, now see, guys. All right. This is the opening, uh, mean to say the price with the increase part and this is the price with the degrees part. Now, Let's try to apply the collar. Remember, this collar gives so much hectic. 
to many students. Let's solve the column. As this is the borrower question, where are you in the class? Borrower always by cap or the put option. Borrower always sell lower or column. Now, one more thing which you have to remember, whether it is a borrower caller or a lender caller you are making, always set cap at higher limit. This is very important. Now see, in this question, we have the two exercise prices. One is 96.25, one is 95.75. What are the answers out of 100? The first one. 100 minus 96.25. And then 100 minus 95.75. Please tell me the answers, guys. Hurry up. 3.75 and 4.25. 3.75 and 4.25. Now see, this is higher. This is lower. At this price, set gap. At this price, set lower. 4.25 and 3.75. 4.25 and 3.75. These are the exercise prices. Now Excuse I told me, you sir. people, yes. Sorry, could you go back to the previous screen where you said set high and set low? I, this is always set cap at higher limit. No, where the calculation was, sorry. Oh, it, was, it is just 100 minus exercise prices. Okay, the two exercise prices has been given to you in the question. So, 100 minus that exercise prices. Now, this exercise prices, first we are solving with the increase part. Increase by 0.5. 4%? Now see guys what is happening. With the increase part, the answer is coming as 4.19. You will state here the closing future price is 4.19% and 4.19%. Now we have to decide whether the option will be exercise or not. My question from you, Ms. Madiha, whether you will exercise the cap? No. What you are saying? No, it will not be exercised. Not. What about the floor, Ms. Madiha? The floor will be exercised? Yes. It's no. See, now those students who are not my previous students, I am going to tell you this criteria again. Most of the students, they will be confused here. Here, as you have sold this option, this option, the call option, does not belong 
to you this option or this choice choice is now with the purchaser now what has happened when you sold this option at 3.75 so you have given an option to the purchaser that if the market is paying lower than this if the market is paying lower than this so i will be paying you 3.75 as the market is paying more than that so in this scenario the other party will not exercise the floor the other party will prefer the market because market is giving more than that of what i have offered like this is the purchaser purchaser has the two options one is what he have purchased and one is the market the market is paying him 4.19% and what he have purchased that option is giving him the 3.75 so which option he will avail tell me guys definitely the higher one <coughs> one more thing this floor or call option why the purchaser has purchased this because the floor or the call options are always for the lenders who have made the investments the cap is normally or always you can say for the borrower who have to pay interest so now the things should be more clear that if this party the purchaser has purchased this call option why because he had made some investments and on that investment he was having a return the return was in two forms one was what he has purchased and one was from the market whatever is giving him the more he will avail that option so as the market is paying him more he will not exercise the floor because floor will be giving him 3.75 and remember one thing whenever the next party will exercise it will be benefit of the next party it will be your loss but as in this choice the next party is not exercising neither the cap or nor the floor will be exercised so now in the actual step what will happen in the actual step guys there will be a actual cost there will be a premium cost now see how you will first go through this premium cost this option the cap we have bought the cap so this will be a payment of the premium minus 0.211 this floor we have sold so this premium we will receive so plus 0.198 what is the net premium cost what is the net 0.211 this is negative this is positive what is the net answer coming the cost is coming how much 0.013 
zero point zero one three. This is the premium cost. Great, Jacqueline. This is in the percentage zero point zero one three. Uh, can you repeat how you got that one in way? See, when you bought cap as one thing you have bought, so you will pay premium. What was that payment of the premium? Tell me. The put option premium was negative. How much? What is this premium? The put option premium. Zero point two, two double one. one. So this is so you payment. paid it's negative. Yes. Okay. Zero point two double one, and the other one you have sold, so you will receive the premium. How much? Zero point one nine eight. So take the difference of these two. So this is the balance. Clear. Okay. Now, in the actual cost, what will happen, guys? In the actual cost. You will be having this closing the actual cost for Mula is you will be taking closing spot plus spread. In this the closing spot, how much this is 3.7 plus 0 0.4, 4.1. And what was the spread in this question? What was the spread, guys? Uh, 50 basis point. So 0 0.5. So in the actual, it will be 4.1% plus the spread 0.5%. How much is coming in the percentage form? Add up 4.1 plus 0.5%. 4.6%. Four point six percent. This is your cost. The premium is your cost. Add up both of these figures. What is your effective cost or the net cost? How much this is? Four point six one three percent. This we have solved with the increase part. Now let's solve with the decrease part. Color with decrease part. Now what is happening? These exercise prices will remain same. There will be no difference. You are saying you will buy cap or put option. You will sell lower or call option. One exercise price is 4.25, 3 3.75. This is 4.25%. This is 3.75%. Now, what is the closing price? What is the closing price now? 3.39. This is 3.39. And this is 3.39. Prudence, let me know whether the cap will be exercised.
Oh, okay, for the mm, for the cap, I I think it's not going to be exercised. It is not because if you will exercise, you will be paying higher. Now, yeah. prudence, tell me whether the floor will be exercised or not. Keeping in mind that when you have to decide with this, you have sold this option, so you do not have yes, to think. Yes, it will be exercised. It will be exercised because now think according to the next party. You have given the purchaser the two options. The market is giving down. You are giving better. So definitely he will come to you and he will exercise the option. Whenever the next party will exercise, it is the next party benefit, but it is your loss. How much is the loss? Take the difference. Now in the actual step, 3.7 minus 0 0.4. 3.7% 0.4% and plus the spread was 0.5%. So what is this coming? Three point eight. Okay. When is your premium cost? Which we have already gone through. Uh, 0 0.013. And what is the loss on exercise? Zero point three six. You see what is the answer is coming for effective cost. What is the effective cost? Four point one seven three percent. Give me one minute break, guys. In the interest rate swap, this is a hype created in the market that most of the time the students they are thinking that the swap of the interest rate is very difficult. This is nothing, guys. First of all, you have the two parties. One is the Fitz Harris, and one other one is the counterpart. Let me know what are their fixed and variable rates. The fixed rate for the first Harris has been given to you in the last paragraph of the question or in the second last. What is that? Tell me, Margi. 4.6. This is 4.6 percent? Yeah. And for the counterparty, what is the rate? 4.8. 4.8%. And what are the variable rate for this one? LIBOR plus 50 basis point? Okay. And what is the variable rate for the counterparty? LIBOR plus 130. LIBOR plus 130 basis point? So 1.30. 1.30. Now just cross them. Tell me, cross me 4.6 plus 1.3, how much it would be? 
and this LIBOR, this one figure would be LIBOR plus 8.5%. And what is the other figure, Margi? 4.6 plus 1.3. 5.9. 5.9. Take the difference. This both will cut off. What is the difference would be there? Eight point five minus five point nine. Okay, first point is oh sorry. This is five point three. Okay. Okay. What is the difference coming? Zero point six percent. This is the difference coming, guys. This is the first step. In the questions of interest rate swaps to calculate the difference or the savings. Number second step distribute the savings. What is the distribution? Examiner told you that whatever the savings are, see, uh, both parties would share equally the potential gains from the swap. So, what it would be? 0 0.6 distributed by Two parties, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. This is the distribution. Number third step. Next distribution. In the net savings, this is 0 0.3%. 0.3%. This is the savings. You will less the bank fee. What was the bank fee, guys, in this question? Five basis. 0 0.05. What is this answer coming? Zero point two five. This is the net saving. First of all, you have to follow these third steps. Number one, second, and the third. Now. You will tell the examiner that if these parties are going for the swap, so after the swap, each party will be having a benefit of 0.25%. This 0.25% benefit is after the swap. It is the result of the swap that after the swap, each party will be having the benefit. Now. The last step that is known as how swap works. Yes, Jacqueline, ask your question. We go back to the other page. Yes. Okay, I was asking how do you know whether it's the difference is a saving or a cost? This is always a saving. There is nothing a concept of the cost here. Because if okay. it is a cost, 
then there is a no benefit of doing the swap. Swap we are doing just to have the savings. Okay. Okay, okay now. Now see guys, we are having one party that is the pet Harris and the other one is the counterpart. Now this is a very point here. First of all, you will write here there before swap positions. Or you can say before swap what they paying now. Now see guys this first Harris is having the 4.6 and this is having the LIBOR plus 0 0.5 and the counterparty is having 4.8 and the LIBOR plus 1.30 as the first Harris as compared to the counterparty it is having more benefit whether it is going into the fix or the variable because these both rates are lower than that of the counterparty. This available rate is 4.6. This available rate is LIBOR plus 0 0.5. So guys, before swap, which rate will be most favorable to Fitz Harris? Can anyone tell me the fix or the variable? Variable. Because in the variable, he has still the flexibility. The variable rate may increase or decrease. But in the fix, he will commit itself at 4.6%. Is, is it always variable? No, no, no. No, it is not always the variable. Now see, we are saying this party before is paying variable. What was the variable rate available? LIBOR plus 0 0.5. This is a payment. If this party is paying variable before, the other party must be paying the fix. 4.8. Now, type here the after swap positions. Try to apply the logic. If this party is having before position of variable, why he is swapping? Because the Fitz Harris want to go from variable to fix. What was the fix rate available? 4.6. But this 4.6 will further reduce by the savings of 0 0.25. This is four point six percent minus 0.25 percent is the saving so what net payment he will be paying tell me four point six percent minus 0 0.25 four point three five four point three five now as this party is previously paying the fix now, after the swap, this party wants to go into the variable. What was the variable rate available? LIBOR plus 1.30. LIBOR plus 1.30 percent minus savings, 0.25 percent. So, what is the net payment now? How much? LIBOR plus 
how much tell me guys are you 1.05 now state here the bank fee what was the bank fee 0.05 and 0.05 This is again a payment. Now, we have to do the backward workings and we have to find out the balancing figures that how this final figures have been there. Now the rule is the party which is Paying variable always you will say that party will receive variable. In this question, which party was paying variable? This one. You will say this party will receive variable. If this is receiving, so the other will be paying. Because these both are swapping with one and each other, this will be paying. Now, tell me, guys, this positive, negative cancelling each other. You are having now 0 0.05 and 0 0.5. What is the balancing figure here that your final answer is coming as 4.35? Let me know what is the figure here that your final answer is coming as 4.35. Tell me. How much? See guys, how you will find. One is 0 0.5, other one is 0 0.05 minus this figure, 4.35%. So what is the balancing figure coming? What is the balancing figure? Margi? 3.8. 3.8? Yeah. This figure will be shown as here the balancing figure of 3.8 percent payment will be here and that will be received here. Now see how this final figure is coming. This is 4.8 negative. This is 3.8 negative. The one from here and the 0 0.05 is here. So 1.05 again here, and this is that. So both equations have been balanced. This is the most technical part of the question, which most of the students, they make a mistake. It is very, very easy. Whatever before swap position is, just type it. What is after swap? Definitely. Why they are swapping? Because they want to change their nature of interest. This was previously variable. It must be changed into the fix. This was previously fixed. It must be changed into the variable. But whatever the rates were available, they will be further reduced by the savings available, both of them due to the swap. And then start backward working. And in the backward working, this is the main point. The party which is paying variable 
first you will be saying that party will receive variable. This was the point here and your question will be automatically solved. Now see, if we compare this with the examiner, what the examiner has done. See now, this is the examiner answers. See, the 4.35 and the LIBOR plus 1.05. This is the 3.8 and the 3.8. So guys, whatever I have told you, just solve the question accordingly and it will be a maximum benefit to you people. Whatever the swap question is coming to you, you can solve that question. Clear everyone? I have and a question. It will be my request to everyone that do not uh, do this, that you are not retrying these questions by your own. Otherwise, what will happen? Whatever the tutors you have, again, you will be forgetting all. Yes, Jacqueline asked. Okay, I'm asking, is this just, how are you, how are you determining that before swap that uh, uh, the, the rate that forfeits is the variable okay, okay. I, I and the counterparty is I, fixed. I, I got your point. See, in this question, the picture was not a quite clear. If you are not getting out of this, so the other point, the hint which the examiner provided you people in this question, the examiner told you people that Fix Harris can currently borrow funds at floating rate. So this is the current situation before swap, okay? But if you want to compare this in this comparison form, what was happening? For the first Harris, both of these, whether it is fixed or variable, these are favorable. But as we have to choose one, so definitely I will choose the variable one. Because in the variable one, I have the more cushion. The variable rate can be increased as well as it can be decreased as well. But in the fixed rate, if I'm choosing, so definitely I have to pay the fixed commitments every year. So definitely as a rational investor or a rational borrower, I will be going for that rate, which is giving me the ups and downs. So that is the very Clear now? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Margi, clear? Yes. Now see guys, what is happening? This is the answers which we have gone through. Now examiner asks you to comment on the results. <sighs> Examiner asks you, what are the advantages of swap and the disadvantage of the swap? First of all, remember swaps are over the counter agreement. I mean, these are not exchange traded. So, these can be arranged in any size. First of all, this. The amount covered by the caller based on traded option because that is exchange traded. So, you know, there you have been given that context size. So there may be over or under hedging also there in the case of exchange traded, but there is no there. The traded options available may last for a shorter period, like for the three months we normally do, or like perhaps for the two years, less maybe than for a period of the loan. Swaps can be arranged for a longer period, right? These are the very good advantages. Fitz Harris is swapping here to commitment to pay a variable rate of interest that is uncertain with a guaranteed fixed rate of interest. You see what has happened? What has happened? We have swapped a commitment 
that we will be paying fixed. This allows forecast finance cost on the loan with certainty because now as our commitment is now fixed, we already know what we are going to pay every year. The net payment on the caller will depend upon how interest rate moves. Like you have computed, if the interest rate is going upwards, the caller is giving different answers. If it is giving downwards, it is giving another answer. Unlike caller, SWAC make use of principal comparative advantage. Fed sellers can borrow in the market where the best deal is available. Like we have already decided that we will be paying the variable Y because when we compared out of two, we said that we are going to select the variable rate. It was the best deal for us available. Now, what are the disadvantages? Swaps are the counterpart risk because as we mentioned in the last question as well, that the forward is over the counter in the same way swaps are over the counter. So the next party can default. This should not generally be a problem if it has arranged the swap through the bank. It may, however, be a problem if arranged the swap itself as the options that the caller is based on, traded on the derivative, the, the, this should guarantee there will be no counterparty risk. If this is the difference or mean the advantage of the uh, option then disadvantage of the swap. Now, what is happening again as you are going to fix your payments when the market will be down, so you will be paying that fixed commitment. As swaps are over the counter, they cannot be traded or allowed to lapse if they are not needed. The options can be traded on a derivative market. They are not traded. And now the C part of the question was when the examiner was asking you explain the Greeks. One was with regard to the time and one was with regard to the interest rate. Guys, always remember all the option, whether it is a call option or whether it is a put option, the option is having the two elements. One is the option intrinsic value and one is the time premium or the time value of money. The time premium diminishes over time to zero when the option, when you say, when the options are coming to the expiry, so the time is going down. Now, this time is being measured by the theta. Theta measures how much time value is lost over time. It is generally expressed as amount lost per day. Theta reduces the value of both put and call options for holders. The change in theta for in the money, in the money options are which are the beneficial for you and out of money options are which are uh, giving loss. So the change in theta for both of these is broadly linear. Mean it will be the same because whether the option is giving you the loss or whether the option is giving you the profit, the time will be reducing over the time. Add the money options have the greatest time premium and the greatest theta. Theta add the money option does not change in a linear fashion, but the changes more rapidly as the expiry date approach. So guys, in your AFM exam, the examiner is not requiring you to perform the calculations of this Greeks. You have to just memorize it. That in the money and out of the money, they have the theta that is broadly linear. But add the money options. Mean add the money options who are at the break even. For them, the theta changes more rapidly. Just you have to remember. And which factor measure this time? That is the theta. And theta is telling you how much the option is losing its value with the passage of time. Now the interest rate. Interest rate is being measured by the Rahu. Rahu measures the option price changes with change to the interest rate. And option Rahu is the amount of change in the value of a, mean a percentage change in the risk-free interest rate. Now, this is important. The Rahu is positive for call and negative for put option. 
compared with other factors affecting option price, the interest rate is not a significant influence. Interest rate often moves slowly. A change in interest rate will be more significant the longer the time until the expiry of an option. So guys, this is again the one to two marks the examiner will be asking. Just you have to remember that interest rate is being measured by the Rahu. Rahu is telling you how much the option value is changing with a change in the interest rate. Rahu is positive for call and negative for the put option. And uh, with other factors, the Rahu is the least significant factor which is affecting this share price. And that's all. So this was your second question, guys, in which we covered the swaps, uh, the closing future price, and the callers.